welcome to episode 53 of the Nifty Knitting Ninja podcast. I am your host, Abigail Taylor. Um, yeah, it's been a few weeks. I hope that everyone has been well. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back to watch me. And if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for checking me out. I hope you like what you see. So it is the 23rd of May, 2019, and it is, gotta look at my phone, yep, it's about noon, so about 12 o'clock. Um, I am so sorry if you can hear the fan going in the background, it's pretty warm in here and I didn't want outside noises in, so the door is closed, but I have to keep cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're just going to jump right into it. I don't have a ton of crafting content this time, uh, but I do have quite a bit to talk about, so we're just going to go ahead and get into that. So, you guys might have seen this last time. The Twinkle Twinkle Blanket by Curious Handmaid, Helen Stewart. She has amazing patterns, by the way. I recommend all of them, even though I've only knit two. And it is folded in half. I will unfold it so that you guys can see it. And I just love this. This gray just really makes these little stars pop. And I don't even know what you guys are looking at because I can't see. There we go. <laughs> um, but yeah. I actually, this took a little bit more yarn than my last one, which is surprising. I thought I had enough. And I ran out on the bind off. I lost yarn chicken, guys. On the bind off. Annoying. Um, so I just had some generic gray that I put in there. And it doesn't look too contrasty on camera, but it's definitely noticeable in person. Um, it's more of like a blue gray. I guess, and this is more of like a silver gray, but that's a blue gray. I just really don't like how the edging turned out, so this one might be for me to keep, and then the green one that you saw in previous episodes may be going to my sister-in-law because she is due a few months after I am. Uh, yeah, but all that I have to do with this one is just weave in the ends and it'll be done. As always, it was a joyful knit, um, and I really, really loved it. I use US size 7s, which I believe is a 4.5mm needle on these, on this. And I used, um, oh, I don't have the tag. Because <laughs> once all the yarn is gone, I get rid of the tag. There's no use in keeping it. I used Loops and Threads Joy Decay in the Cloud colorway. So that's what I used. Um, but yeah, this is done. I just got to weave in the ends, which I'm going to sit down one day and have a weaving in ends party before this little guy gets here, which is coming very soon, six weeks, but we'll talk about that later. And, okay, so just keep in mind, I don't weave in the ends on anything currently, so everything has the ends out, which... I'm not shamed about shameless ends. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the title to this episode, shameless ends. Um, but this is a little sun hat. And this is the Chameleon Gone Fishing sun hat. It's a free pattern on Ryerly. It's crocheted. I use a size G and a size H because that's what it calls for. This is the 12 to 18 month size. But wait. There's more. It gets better, guys. <laughs> this is the zero to three month size. They look, they do look drastically different, but oh, so cute. Well, not drastically. It's just this one's got a little more stitching up here than this one, but so so cute. And this is actually cotton yarn, and I have some dyes specifically for cotton in, like, blue-green boy colors. So what I'm going to do is the next time that I dye yarn, I'm going to throw these in the dye pots and see how they come out. I'm going to dye them up. 
Uh, so that'll be a fun project, and by then I'm sure I'll have all these crazy ends woven. <laughs> I'm bad, guys. I'm bad. Um, and the other thing, so this has kind of become an obsession. <laughs> Just because they're so quick and mindless to work up, like, I can make one in a day or a few hours, like, while I'm watching TV or watching podcasts or just relaxing with my hubby at night. Um, they're just so quick to make up, and I have some, I have some really, really nasty, <laughs> you guys don't even know this, I have some really, really nasty dishcloths in my kitchen cupboard. And so my goal is to replace all of those with ones that I've made. So, and th this is in no specific order. I'm just showing them to you as I'm grabbing them. And I don't have very many to grab, so we'll see. This little beauty is in the pink lemonade colorway. It's just a sugar and cream cotton. You know, dollar fifty a ball at Walmart, and the pattern is Grandma's favorite dishcloth. Um, Grandma spelt with, spelt like G R A M M A. Um, it's the same pattern that Yarn Hoarder uses, and I really don't like the eyelets either. So I did the no eyelet version, and I did that for all of these. I um, I used a US nine on these, which Actually, I have over here. I'm going to check the millimeters. 5.5 .5 millimeter. <laughs> just because I really like the fabric that it creates. And it's a really, it's just a really nice fabric with the nines. Even though it's a worsted weight. And then I created this one. And this is Peaches and Cream Psychedelic which looks pretty awesome. Um, however, I noticed with the peaches and cream, and maybe this is just cotton in general. I haven't worked with a ton of cotton in my knitting career. But I noticed that the more color that is on the yarn, it seems like the more rough and the more stiff the cotton yarn is. And I don't know if that's like the dyeing process and, um, and that affects it. I don't know, but it just seems a little more rough. Like this one actually hurt my hands to work on and I really really love working on these um, but this yarn just kind of hurt my hands a little bit and I noticed this was the only one that did it and it's because it has so many different colors in it I think I'm not sure if that's the reason but yep there's psychedelic which is hilarious because my shop, uh, yarn shop name is the psychedelic sheep which I'll talk a little bit about later as well. And then I believe that I showed these last time. This is just, and it's still getting blown out on camera. Oof. The color is not good. Showing up more blue. Eh, still showing up kind of blue, but that's a better representation is this right here. Um, it's kind of like, it's not a deep purple, but it's a plummy purple. Um, it's called black currant is the color. And see, whereas this one is just one color, it's really soft and it feels really nice. But it's the same brand, peaches and cream. And there's the second one. See? Two. And two came out of a two and a half ounce ball. Each one, each dishcloth takes about an ounce. Um, and I am saving all of my leftovers so that I can um, make scrappy ones. <laughs> because I, I'm addicted, guys. I am addicted to knitting washcloths. And I'm blaming it on yarn, yarn hoarder. I don't know why I just had a brain fart on her name. I'm blaming it on yarn hoarder Amber. I am blaming you for my washcloth obsession, okay? Which you're probably okay with being blamed for that, but 
I'm still blaming you. Um, and since we're still in finished objects, I'm going to show you this. You guys might remember that I was spinning this as singles, and it is now applied. Don't know exactly how much I got, how much yardage or anything, but um, help if I cover my face. Like I'm not showing this well. I'm so sorry, guys. There we go. It does have sparkle in it. It is not Selena. It is silver polyester. Yeah, it's just a little two ply sample which there was only enough fiber for a sample anyway. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this, but um, it feels really nice. Maybe even a little bit ropey in a few spots, but it, it does feel nice. It was more of like a practice thing because um, I never spun anything with sparkle in it. So this was a good learning experience, really. Um, and it did spin up as let me see if I can find a good strand to show you. Well, there aren't really any good strands because this was a little bit hard to spin. It kept breaking. Yeah, it, um, it spun up kind of like a fingering weight. That's all that I have to say about it, really. <laughs> I spent it on my mini Turkish spindle, um, which is 3D printed, that I bought off of Daisy Knits. I don't have it over here with me, but I will link to her shop down below. Um, I don't think she sells them in her Etsy shop, but I believe if you message her, then she'll see what she can do for you about that. Yeah. Um, but I went to a yarn festival, Fiber U, which is in July every year, um, usually a weekend in July, and I bought those from her there, and you got two arms, so short arms and long arms, and then the middle stick to go through the arms, like a traditional Turkish spindle, um, for $20. So like they are really great value. They're really, really light. The small one is a half ounce. The big one is 0.75 ounces. So very lightweight. It can spin very fine. I don't have any other spindles because those are the only ones that I like to spin on. They are plastic. They are 3D printed, but they come in all sorts of fun colors and they still do the job. So I'm not worried about it. Enough blubbering about that. Um, <laughs> you can kind of see my belly up here, and yeah, everything's getting huge. <laughs> Alright, we're going to move into works in progress. And I only have one of these. Again, ends are not woven in on anything. <laughs> this is the 12 to 18 month size, and I knitted this in this size because the yarn is a little... It's a little more rustic. It's not scratchy set per se, but it is a little more rustic. Not something that I really want against a newborn skin or a young baby skin, so I did 12 to 18 months in this size and I for the pattern. I'm trying to slow down talking because I feel like I'm talking really fast. For the pattern, I am using Mina Phillips Easy Baby and Toddler Socks recipe. That is what I'm using. And, oh man, I should have brought the other sock in here. I didn't think about it. My husband has a pair of socks in this here. And my goal before the baby gets here is to knit him a pair of socks, each pair matching a pair that I've already knit his daddy. So they'll have matching socks. Um, that's my goal. <laughs> my sock mojo is a little low right now, so I'm having trouble with that. But, um... She uses a generic short row heel, and I just I just put in a fish lips kiss heel on all of my socks. Um, so yeah, this one is done, minus ends being woven in. And then I really wish I would have brought in the bigger sock to this because it's adorable. This is freaking adorable. Like there's no 
there's no scale to how tiny this is. Like, look at my hand. <laughs> um, this is the zero to three month size because the yarn is a little more kind. And again, his daddy has socks in this exact, in these exact colors. And I didn't know the yarn for the other socks. I lost the ball band, but these I do know is Show Me Yarn. Excuse me, I just ate lunch. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, this is Show Me Yarn Boot Heel Base in their Honeycomb and Moonless Night colorway, which as I mentioned, I did make his dad a pair of these socks, but like these are super tiny, like zero to three months compared to 12 to 18 months. Oh, that's not adorable. <laughs> um, and yes, I should be working on the matching socks, right? Wrong. Um, <laughs> Make another washcloth. <laughs> I told you guys, I am addicted. Like, I'm totally addicted to making these. This is just another grandma's grandma's dishcloth, grandma's favorite washcloth. And I'll link the pattern and everything else that I talk about in the show notes, which you can find on my blog at www.littletaylorwifelife.blogspot.com. And yeah, this isn't showing up quite true to color either. Let's see if I can... No, it's showing up more blue. But it's a, it's a green aqua is what it is. It's really a green aqua. Again, peaches and cream. This is one of the bigger balls. Um, all the other ones that I showed you besides black currant, like the pink lemonade and the psychedelic, these come in two ounce balls. Um, the black currant in this color comes in two and a half ounce balls. So I'm able to get at least two out of one of these bigger, bigger balls. Um, this is the colorway mint. And it it's a greeny mint. And it's still showing up really blue. But it is not a blue mint. It is a green mint. You can kind of tell next to my shirt, like, my shirt is blue, and this is coming across a little bit more green. But yeah, US 9's 5.5 millimeters, which um, I'm actually working up all my dishcloths on. Sorry if you can hear that. That's the needle against the keyboard. I'm working them all up on my marbles, interchangeables, knitter's pride marbles. Which my hu lovely hubby got me for my birthday. Made me really happy. But yeah, that's all the knitting content, guys. That's all the crafting content. So if you came here just for that and you are no longer interested in anything else I have to say, have a great week, couple of weeks, and I will see you next time. For those of you that choose to stick around, um, it's basically just going to be me talking for the rest of the time. I do have a little bit of shop talk. Um, finally, finally made another order, another bear yarn order. So uh, more dye jobs will be coming to the shop. Um, I had to order in yarn for a custom order because I ran out. <laughs> My bad. Um, so yeah, and I needed to get past that fifty dollars. Sorry, I'm looking at a cardinal. It's flying through my plants outside on my porch. Not happy about that. <laughs> he comes by every day and looks at me in the window and he's like, Are you gonna see me? Are you gonna see me? But we can't have bird seed out here, unfortunately. Um, we'll get a citation for it. So, sorry little guy, no food. Anyways, <laughs> get back to the subject. Um, I needed a little bit more to get past that $50 threshold and I had a $5 off coupon for $50 or more so I actually got $55 worth of product for $50 if that makes sense they're having really great savings like that over on Nitpicks I think if you spend 75 you get 10 off if you spend like 120 
you get 20 or 25 dollars off um, so head on over to nitpicks if you're wanting to get in on those deals um, but one more bare skein would have put me way over what I wanted to spend so I needed just a few little things so I got a couple of balls of dishy uh, I have never tried dishy before and I'm really really excited because obviously I'm obsessed with knitting dishcloths um, so I'm excited to have that coming I got a pomegranate red and a dark teal color I would have got them more but again more than what I wanted to spend so you guys will see some more dyeing coming up soon for the shop my Etsy shop is the psychedelic sheep um, and yeah I hand dye yarn that's what I do also let's see if I can remember everything that I talked about I really should write down some show notes because this pregnancy brain is really awful can't remember remember nothing I forgot my brother's birthday the other day like who does that I'm horrible anyways um <laughs> so two weeks ago was Mother's Day so happy very belated Mother's Day to all the wonderful mothers out there to my own mother to my mother-in-law um, to all the grandmas and to all the mothers to be which I celebrated because I'm a mom to be. Um, so yeah, happy Mother's Day. And if for whatever reason you did not celebrate Mother's Day, I see you. And my heart goes out to you. I've been there and it's no fun to have a painful reminder of a holiday come up for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, this next weekend is Memorial Day weekend. It is also the weekend of my baby shower. My baby shower is in three days. Super excited. My mom is planning it. Um, and yeah, we've been kind of co-working on this baby shower, putting stuff together, um, making stuff, working out food plans and invitations and super excited um, I probably won't take any video of it because I'm gonna just focus on having a great time but I may take a few pictures and post them in the nip nip, nip. <laughs> post them in the next episode can't talk either today apparently um so yeah that's exciting that's coming up um six weeks six weeks from tomorrow is my little man's due date so we are getting close 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 um, and I'm just trying to get prepared and get ready I spent four hours this morning from the time I woke up to pretty much an hour ago I spent four hours this morning cleaning my house and it was stuff that I actually really needed to do like do laundry, wash sheets, clean the bathrooms, um, sweep the floors, you know, just regular house stuff, but I think I went a little overboard. I kind of did a deep clean, which the house really, really needed, and I feel so much better because I did that. Um, I went and got the guest bathroom ready, and it looks so cute and makes me so happy. Like, I'm really happy with how I put it together. Um, not the brag. <laughs> We are still trying to get ready for a little man. Uh, there are a few things that we are still needing. And no obligation, obviously, but if anyone would like to contribute, we do have registries on Amazon and Walmart, which I will link in the show notes as well if anybody is interested in helping out. Uh, like I said, absolutely no obligation. I just thought that I would mention that. But yeah, everything is good. And... Um, I'm just in that full-on nesting mode. On the days where I don't feel like nesting, I just feel like doing nothing. <laughs> so it's nesting or nothing. Um, maybe that'll be the title. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, things have been good. Just getting ready for the baby. It's been blasted hot. Um, and we are in full swing tornado season here in 
the southern Missouri. Um, so yeah, that's been fun. We're, anytime that there's like major storms going on, there's usually like two or three tornado warnings, and we don't have anywhere to go. So I just grab blankets and pillows and jump in the bathtub if I think it's coming my way. <laughs> that's all that I can do at this point, um, which is not a good plan, but it's all that I got, and it's a better plan than no plan, right? Um, but yeah, today is sunny and great, and looking out at all of my plants on the patio, and they're just loving the sunshine, and of course the rain, and they're just growing. We only have a patio. Um, my sliding door is right over here, because I keep, in case you guys haven't guessed, I keep motioning over here. Um, but yeah, so we can only do container gardening. Um, because we don't actually have a backyard, sadly. But container gardening is working really well. So far we have four different kinds of tomatoes, um, variety of bell peppers, which is orange, yellow, red, and green. We have squash, cucumbers, green beans, on two different kinds of onions, carrots, strawberries, um, we've got a pumpkin plant going, we've got cantaloupe growing, um, we've got sunflowers and some zinnias and daisies growing, because I insisted on having a few flowers. Um, but yeah, everything's just growing really great, and I just, I love my plants. I'm a crazy plant lady. I just really love it. Um, I would show you guys, but my phone doesn't have any more memory, and it's a pain transferring video from my phone to the computer and editing, and so maybe one day, maybe one day I will take the computer out there and you guys will get to see my little patio garden. But uh, for right now, we're going to keep things inside, and oh, something I forgot to mention too, this. my scrappy granny bolster cover pattern I really really wanted to release tomorrow and have it free for a week before it became a pay pattern um, I have to check in with my tester she hasn't checked in with me in a few days so I've got to check back in with her and see how she's coming um, I do have to change a few things with the pattern so we may have to move the release date down to July 3rd or June 1st. Um, we may have to do that because I don't want to rush her. I want to make sure that she has enough time to fully test this and that all the kinks are worked out before I release the pattern to you guys. Um, but yeah, this is just... I made a magic ball and did this section and then I just took a leftover Knit Picks Felici, made the end pieces. I love this so much, guys. It's my original and I love it so much. Um, my hubby, my hubby even loves it, but, um, yes, hopefully sometime, if not tomorrow, then June 1st, this pattern will be released. It'll be free for a week before it, before it becomes paid, a paid for pattern, and after that week is up, if you would like to get this pattern, it'll only be $1.50, um, which I think is not very much at all. I mean... You spend a dollar fifty on soda and a candy bar, probably more than that, when you go to the grocery stores. So, why not give yourself the gift that keeps on giving? Because once you have a pattern, you can make however many you want, right? Um, but yeah. Anyways, I I'm hoping to release this soon, very very soon. Um, like I said, I still have to get in contact with her, but hopefully, hopefully it'll be soon. Um. Yeah, I think that's all that I have for today. I told you I had a lot of talking to do. Not so much content, but a lot of talking. And I have a few things on the computer that I need to type up. And I have a few podcasts I need to catch up on, which I think I'll do while I'm editing. And, um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. And I will see you next time. Bye.